Hello and welcome to the .CMS Content Contributor course. This course will cover all of the .CMS tools that enable content contribution and authoring throughout a website. What you see here is our demo site. This is Travelux. It's a travel website that we have developed just to demonstrate all the various features and capabilities of .CMS. This is what we call the front end of our site. This is where all of our users will visit and interact with our site. However, if I wanted to get to the back end of the site so that I could contribute content, what I would need to do is log in. I can simply take the URL that I am currently visiting and add slash admin. This will take me to a login page. And here I can enter my credentials and log in. You can log in using an email address and password or using single sign-on, depending on how your organization has set up login. Now I already have the backend open in another tab. And here you'll notice we're on a welcome page. This is a page that shows us a couple of quick access links that allows us to quickly and easily get to different tools within the .CMS backend. On the left-hand side, you'll notice a blue column. This column is our general navigation, how we move around throughout the .CMS backend. And you'll notice the welcome page that I'm currently on is highlighted. You'll also notice the welcome page I'm currently in is within a group called Getting Started. I can click Getting Started to shrink or expand the dropdown. This is called a tool group as it's a grouping of the tools available on the .CMS backend. Let's take a look at the content tool group. Here I have a number of options to choose from. If I select activities, I'll be able to see all of the activities available on my site. Now you'll notice I also have options such as banners, blogs, etc. And then there's a search page. I can use a search page to do exactly that, search for specific content. It's important to note that this search page is really all that exists and all of these other content tools are essentially just different content types selected on the search page and stored for easy access. Where we should begin discussing .CMS is in the site browser. Whether or not you can see the site browser is up to the permissions available to you and your user profile. It's possible that you're not able to see and access the site browser depending on your webmaster's permission setup, how they've determined that your user profile should be able to access the backend. However, there's still something here I'd like to show you. You'll notice that we have a tool called Pages. If I click on Pages, it will show me all of the pages here within my site. I also have something called the Site Browser, and this allows me to search and navigate through the file structure behind my site. By using the site browser, I can access any of the files and pages that exist within my site. You'll see here a page called index. If I look to the right, this column says home. This is my home page. And if I double click on it, it will actually open the home page of my site. This is a preview of that page. This lets me navigate around the page as though I were visiting it on the front end. This is of course to provide us with a preview. However, I can also edit this page and click the edit tab here at the top. Here you'll notice that I can edit the content that exists on the page. Now you might think that all of this makes up that page. However, that's not the case. If I go back to my site browser and right click on my index for my home page and click page properties, we'll see what actually makes up our page. Here there's a tab called content and everything that you see on this tab and in some of these other tabs makes up our page. I would like to point out one of these options in particular, that is the template property. This dropdown allows us to select a template and these templates are highly important. They determine how our page is laid out and what content is available to be placed on it. Yes, even though our page does show content on it, all of this content does not exist necessarily as a part of the page. The page exists separately from the content and the content is simply displayed on the page. 
So when we're looking at page properties and we see the things that are on the content tab, the SEO tab, the advanced properties, etc., we're seeing everything that makes up that page. That page doesn't actually contain any content at all. Now I mentioned the template and you'll notice this says custom page layout. This is custom for our homepage. I'm going to close this window and we'll navigate back to our index homepage by double clicking. Here, once again, I can see my preview, but if I click on the edit tab, just as before, we can modify the content in our page. Now you may notice these boxes and these boxes are determined by our templates. These templates are created beforehand by our webmaster and allows us as content contributors to simply add the content that we are creating. We don't need to worry about style choices and features and functions of the site. We can simply create and add our content. The template and the layout will do everything else for us. Now you'll notice that we have these various boxes and these boxes are what we call containers. Containers are what holds the content. So we have a page and that page has a template and that template has containers. And in those containers goes the content. Now, there are some other things here too. Let me show you. If I click on layout here on the right hand side, this will actually show me our template layout. Here we can see the various containers that exist on the page. But again, these don't contain the content themselves either. Let's go back to the content view by clicking on content on the right. I'll click on edit once again. And here we can see we have a banner. Now this container, which is titled banner, is limited to only allowing certain types of content, depending on how it was created when that template was made. So we can't add content anywhere that we want. You'll notice that, for instance, I can't add anything to the header, or if I scroll to the bottom, I can't add anything to the footer either. I'll know where I can add content by looking for the blue plus sign. If I see this blue plus sign, I can click it to add new content. There are a number of ways that we can add content, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, but content is the primary one. And if I click on this, I'll be able to then choose the content from the search. This might look a bit familiar. From here, I can pick any of the content that I am allowed to add to that container. And that container can be limited to only certain types of content. Here I can add blogs. I can add some dot assets, some YouTube videos, banners, call to action, all sorts of things. So this container is pretty open-ended. I can click the content type dropdown to choose a specific content type. I can search and I can choose individual languages if we do have multiple languages set up on our site. Whenever I'm done choosing something, I can click select and that will add it to that container. Here we see that image I just added. If I wanted to say, move this around, I could click on these two lines and then drag it within that container. Maybe I want it at the top. If I decided I don't want that piece of content in that container, I can simply click the X in the top right corner of that piece of content and remove it. .cms will confirm if I actually do want to remove this content. And it tells us, hey, we can't undo this. I'll click accept. And now that content is gone. Now, when it says that you can't undo this, that doesn't mean that the content has been deleted. In fact, if I click that plus sign, click on content and look at my options, you'll see there is that exact same image. So the content still exists. Interesting. Going back to what we talked about with our templates and containers, the content that we place on a page is essentially just a reference to that content elsewhere. It says, hey, grab this piece of content and insert it here and refers to that content to be displayed on that page and in that container. However, if we were to 
remove or modify the content there on the page that doesn't necessarily affect the content itself, just its reference here in the page. This means that content can be reused all over our site and that our content contribution is extremely powerful. So as a quick recap, understanding how a .CMS site works and how the hierarchy of content works is important going forward. Remember, we have our site and within that site, we can have pages. Those pages can each have different templates. And within those templates, we'll have containers. Containers can hold our content. And we'll talk more about different types of content later on. Hopefully this makes sense. And as we move forward through .cms and teach you more about how this tool works, you'll only add on to this basic level of knowledge.